This is Total Warhead and welcome to another early game guide here in a Total War Saga Troy. This one will be with Memnon. Now I want to point here that we're going to be doing this on historical mode. The reason for that is that how I want to structure this is to make it on the hardest game mode that a player can play and whatever I decide to do is still viable across all three game modes. I have completed a campaign on Mythos. I know how his skill tree looks on historical and how it looks on as a single entity in truth behind the myth and mythos as well now on the screen what is important we can now recruit defender protectors so we still got warlords which are great for our economy aka our hordes fighters which are great 1v1 heroes and then archers which are great for boosting up missile units and for taking out high value targets from far away from his unique units the one we care about the most is the shredden warriors they're one of the most powerful units in the game and nothing that to scoff at i love this unit and this is the one we primarily would want to get towards mid to late game but this is an early game guide so we're gonna focus on that the resources uh i mean the faction mechanics we will look at them later i want to showcase that this is legendary campaign difficulty veteran battle difficulty what that entails in veteran is that i have minus four morale for all my armies and the ai has plus six morale for all his armies additionally the ai gets percentile multipliers to a lot of other statistics in 15 to 20 percent magnitude which are very steep including towards the late game in terms of our diplomatic bonuses we don't have any for this faction if you look at for example Both sarpedon all other divine. factions except rissus and memnon have diplomatic bonuses or penalties with other factions rissus and memnon do not that might be a bug because that usually would appear here he does get plus 10 percent campaign movement range for this army and minus five percent to construction costs of all horde buildings i want to structure this so you can win a homeric victory and therefore a total war victory so we'll be focusing on his epic mission chain and completing it as, as well as unlocking all of his feral servant territories which won't be done by the end of the guide but we'll get at least one uh completed so let's go so let's begin first off by saying that you want to get gold as much as possible that is the master of this entire thing what you really should aim for master jewelers is the first road crew we're gonna go for because it'll give us plus 10 gold per turn that is of utmost essence next we have awesome units that we can potentially recruit from other of these um what do you call it territories that we have not unlocked how you unlock them is through world decrees or by building certain buildings i would say that the best units in the game for you to use from early to mid game are kerma based units with the urgent staff bearers they are extremely powerful along with the ethiopian archers as you go from mid to late game these units the archers of wawat the medjai warriors are great note that the medjai warriors kind of don't do too well in siege battles as they take a lot of damage due to their low armor and lack of shield block chance then in, in that case you can go for the naktuwa infantry which are phenomenal units uh to get which do have a shield and their overall stats are great them being shielded spear and two-handed along with flanking attack improved means that their offensive stat distribution can get very deadly with great enough buffs that they can basically supplant the power of the magi warriors even though the magi warriors could inflict more damage upon a charge the units that we want to end up getting though the most elite ones and we want to we want to rotate a row decrease to are to getting the shredden warriors and the elemanite elam element um stone slingers the Sheridan Warriors are the key units of this roster. They are the most powerful units in this roster. There's just bar none. Battlefield healing, immune to flanking. The stat distribution is extremely disgusting. Medium mass, 150 HP per unit model. This unit is like a sight to behold. I absolutely love them. And the element Stone Slingers are really powerful. But first things first, I'm going to ignore the Egyptian based units. I'm not going to go for them early to mid game i want to focus on african based units until susa becomes something viable that i can go for so what we want to first go for is basically a lot of shaft and a lot of units with vanguard deployment because we want to abuse that as much as possible so let's get a napata based um a call to units for us to recruit them and how this works is it costs a uh, reinforcement cost to get these units 500 uh food 
820. Note that you cannot reduce these costs unless a world decree that you research specifically states that you can lower the cost. That is the only way to lower these values. So we're going to get this one. And you notice that some territories now have a one turn cooldown. The level, basically the level, the tier ones of the Egyptian and the Ethiopian ter territories suffer from that. Now we can still do Kerma, but we don't have the wood for it. Additionally, we have about 180 wood left and we have three population surplus, but we don't have the wood to build anything else at the moment. I don't want to focus on Egyptian units. I'm going to remove the Pharaoh statue, which actually is a great late game based building to get with the 10% extra AP damage that you can get from melee units. And if you get Naktua infantry, they can get plus 10 morale because you get plus 10 from uh to all units from egyptian territories and more battle speed for units with weapon switching like the Naktua infantry so we will definitely remove that and now since we got those units we're gonna actually recruit them into this army and now we have a lot of units almost all of them have vanguard deployment except the units that are not of um the african territory the two egyptian units that i still have at this moment i also have a wood a food settlement here that could provide me a lot of food at the moment but in order to do to maximize how much i'm gonna get from food i want to get cult of artemis to lady of the forest 50 favor or more in order to get 25 percent to food from war spoils so this is a something that we're gonna aim to do at this moment additionally i would want to do a prayer in order to get two warriors of artemis but to recruit those units you only have you can only do it while the prayer is active and we don't have neither the food nor the uh, bronze to afford getting both of those two uh, phenomenal archers. But we will get there. We'll get there in due time because there is a bronze settlement at this location. So, since I do have the population to build another building, the one I want to aim for after uh, I get enough wood is the Sacred Stone of Hephaestus here in order to make sure all units get plus 5 to armor and to melee attack. I can also lower their upkeep costs with this and also by getting this to tier you know by building this temple i can get blessings of the force so i can get plus 50 percent to bronze and gold from war spoils which is going to be great given the two territories that we start out with so before we engage this army we could still try to potentially ask for the wood that we need in order to build the temple the temple costs 630 wood i have 130 the difference between those two things is 450 the question is how the hell am i gonna afford um that you know in essence so we're gonna go here and we see that there are um what do you call it there are factions that do have a bit of gold that i can trade for troy is kind of broke to start out with although they start out with a pretty good amount of um what do you call it gold which could be enough to actually do a prayer if i need to do one but what we want to aim for is getting gold now what we have the most of at the moment is bronze even though we have negative 39 at the moment we can get a good amount of it um based upon that building that I'll is close to us so what we're gonna do is ask for the amount of wood that we need which is really hard to ask for in the early game and then let's see how much we need to trade away of our bronze in order to make this happen 360 is enough so we're gonna aim to pull this off at this moment note that after winning um battles you actually can gain wood and from racing settlements as well but we want to make sure that we have enough before we do engagements because if we have to ask for any resources when our armies have weakened after a battle we're gonna suffer due to that so let's engage this army here and look at this extremely good situation here extremely good engagement it says here that the chance of winning is really good in my favor so i'm not even going to do this battle initially i'm going to actually do the auto resolve even though a militia unit will greatly suffer from this outcome now at first you might be saying what the hell what am i going to go for here i mean I, can, I definitely need replenishment i'm not getting any um what do you call it you actually don't gain that much replenishment in the early game as memnon well there's a couple things here that are very important put them to death does not have a turn cooldown once you select this at least once it's for forever activated we also want to get let them live at at least three to five times in order to get ransom captives trait which gives plus 20 percent to battle captives taken in combat we don't need the morale at this moment so we're gonna go for let them live in order to get ransom captives and get more battle captives taken 
after battle. Now, we've already got 12 units in our army, so we can complete this mission as well. And at this moment, Memnon also leveled up. Note that in historical mode, he starts out with an Ethiopian Spearman, which is basically a unit that could be very good for flanking purposes and for your cycle charging. He does start out with his unique item, Pharaoh's Writ, which does give plus 5 to morale of all units in Hero's Aura, plus 5 morale for all units in his army, and plus 5 melee attack. That is huge. Now, additionally, his based um, trait that he gets as a faction leader is plus 10% to campaign movement range for this army and minus 5% to construction costs of all horde buildings. That is really good. Note that every single commander of the Memnon roster gains 30% movement range after raising a settlement, 8% more campaign movement range for this army, and they have an innate bonus to success chance of ambushes of plus 15%, which is really good. Now, in terms of what we wanna go for here, we want to not use a point initially, and we want to reduce the upkeep cost of units of the Napata territory. Specifically, we want to go for these units, Napata hunters or spearmen, so we can further reduce how much these units cost to maintain, as we will have a lot of them in the early to mid game. So we definitely want to go for things like this. On the first level though, if you were to use a point, March of Hermes is phenomenal to use, and I like to go for this one traditionally. Now, we are pretty strong at this moment in terms of our overall army. Let's actually group up these units. We have 11 units at the moment, and we are at a point where we can engage this territory, and I think it would be a good idea to do so. We have 11 units at the moment. We do, we're do. we going to be facing off against a hero that does have flanking attack improved. Ah, because it's a light swordsman. I was like, why the hell do you have flanking attack improved? Light swordsmen are not, not a joke. They're a unit that you gotta watch out for very carefully. We could technically raise this, um, auto resolve this raw, this battle and still maintain a lot of units here. We can definitely do this. And with that, there's two things that you can go for. So push on will give us plus seven melee attack and plus seven to melee damage of all units for two turns. And this is something that you should notice. You actually gain more resources from raising the settlements then or, or from race and kill instead of race and enslave race and enslave is actually good to get horde growth we want to make sure that at all times push on is active so we get these bonuses if the enemy attacks us when we're least expecting it so let's go for that we've completed that at the very least there there should be an army at that location that will go to try to attack us and note that we can go to encamp stands with as little or as much movement range as we want to so let's do it at the moment here now we can finish um, getting the Hephaestus built up. We're going to remove the Pharaoh statue to, because we don't need this at the moment. And then here we have a lot of units that are pretty weak. Let's actually unite them. And then we can potentially, at the moment, wait to get more units. The Kerma one just costs way too much to actually get. And then if we look at resourceful strategies, we have a lot of food. I mean, that is an immense amount of food. Now we can do a couple of things with this. We have 18 gold at the moment. And if we look at Prayer to Apollo, we could lower the cost of camp followers for our army's faction wide by 10%, which actually can save us a lot in this early game. I would say that we definitely want to do this. We just need two more gold in order to achieve it. So then we can do resource for strategists and save a lot of money. So let's go here to uh, Diplomacy yet again. Let's look at who's really friendly with us, which are these guys. And then as we can see, Troy the is super rich at the moment in gold. So if we ask for two gold, well, I guess we got to give him something, you know, he's a, he's a shabby little fellow over here. We don't really need that much bronze at this time. Maybe we can just give him like 200 here. We're going to gain a lot of bronze as well. And we can potentially gain enough um, gold to potentially alternate our um, temples pretty well. Let's go up. 100 let's say we do 100 and it costs 120 no let's not get greedy let's only do this there we go that's enough at least for now for what we need and then we're gonna go here and we're gonna go do an initial prayer to apollo a prayer to apollo is really valuable when you're playing memnon because you actually gain as well a line of sight for all armies and you will greatly suffer from a low amount of line of sight in the early game so you really want to make sure that you get this up and running as much as possible we're still level two we haven't leveled up again 
our growth is only five we could definitely want to get that up and up and higher so also when you Battle deconstruct the building done. you will actually reduce your next building's population surplus required because it'll drop to wherever it is on the third tier instead of the fourth tier of the building that you're constructing so the next building that we construct will be three population surplus there so i believe that will be it i can't recall calling your units resourceful strategies will activate them the next turn and that will be it here we're asked for an epic mission to call reinforcements from napata which is the region that we called from in the previous turn so we can activate this this turn to gain more bonus experience for memnon and chosen of raw which is more campaign movement range at this turn so let's go here and begin this let's go towards um let's see we probably want to hold off on that let's actually get the napata called then and that's gonna net us the oldest bonus experience and he has leveled up so we could definitely lower the upkeep of these units but something to keep track of as i've been uh thinking about this is that this is really good for the early game to just lower your overall upkeep but it's not an overall necessity for you to have so i would say that you don't need this to mid to late game so it becomes a redundant skill for you to keep so what we can do though is actually go for march of hermes and the radius specialization so our units uh, regain a lot of stamina over 30 seconds so in the battle they won't necessarily get tired so fast and they gain more speed so we can go for that overall buff there then additionally we already have um enough money to potentially get some of these uh camp followers that appear here the most essential ones to get in the early game are plus three horde growth and then the extra replenishment which will give us five percent at the very least for the army then we want the one for the sea but we don't have the wood for it we'll hold off on that one and then this one here will give us minus five percent to morale for enemy units now the outrider scout is a pretty neat one but i've never really used it. it it reveals all enemy units for this army and then the egyptian assassin basically it's a super valuable one in the early game uh to use and mid game in order to lower the overall health of the general by fit to 50 percent but first off we'll go for the ones that help our overall horde army in economic or um replenishment purposes growth purposes and morale reduction purposes so let's go for these ones we saved 10 percent, so we saved a lot of um money by getting that and then i can now get a lot of these units recruited here and then with that we can do one of two things we can engage this settlement or this one here my what i prefer here is to go for this settlement at this location and then i'll be facing off against 10 units in total and there's a good chance that the enemy will sally out against me if not it'll be four turns before he um decides to push is still active so if he actually attacks me i'll get plus five plus seven melee attack and plus seven melee damage um for that battle now i have enough food but not enough bronze to recruit the warriors of artemis if i do get it um if i do get this settlement raised though then i could potentially get those units into my roster which are extremely powerful but here we have a lot of units about one two three four five six seven eight uh, melee units and really powerful uh, missile units let's get the hephaestus um equipment hephaestic equipment to give them all plus five armor and plus five melee attack helping them for this upcoming battle now if i want to reduce the overall health of the general i can still do it if they attack so that's something that's valuable but we will hold off on doing that and just with diplomacy there's nothing else that we want to do at the moment so that will be it here let us continue so the enemy decided to attack during this turn and thanks to them attacking and i now have the minus five percent not 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 due to them attacking just the buffs that i have i have minus five percent to morale for all enemy units i have plus eight percent to my morale of my own units i still have push on active and all these armies are also buffed up by the hephaestic equipment so we are potentially negating some of the overall buffs that or netting um a good gain versus the buffs that the ai gets due to playing a legendary difficulty so without further ado let's do this battle all right i've deployed my units so what i want to do here is a lot of these units can hide both on forest and scrubs which is really powerful especially for missile units so i'm gonna put these guys in this engagement right here and these ones over here now the reinforcements of the enemy are going to come let me put these guys right here and these ones right here 
and make sure we have uh, guard mode on all these units. So the enforcement of them, you're going to come here, and that's the strongest army. The garrison general is an axeman based general, which is powerful. The general of the main army that I'm engaging, though, is not that strong. Additionally, I want to confuse the AI a little bit by maybe trying to see if they actually deploy on this side. There's a chance that he'll deploy close to his reinforcements to really trick him so his armies are in a bad, um, what do you call it, positioning for my own without further ado let's go the enemy is receiving reinforcements oh good 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 Let's make sure these guys can move faster so they go over here. Now we can shoot this general to death. This unit is completely flanked. Make sure this guy shatters. Your warriors are losing heart. Understood. Spearmen, get moving. Lockford, the prize of Ethiopia. Ethiopians, attack. Consider it done. Make them pay. As you wish, as commanded. In Pharaoh's name. Spearmen. Saving light of the dawn. Your hero is under attack. Show no fear! Take them down! End them! Born to fight! Make them suffer! Take them down! Make them pay! Hearing aid! Ethiopians, attack! End them! Glory awaits! All right, that's the combat potential. They're done. Don't worry too much about the slingers. Let's make sure we eliminate or take down as many of the unit models of every single other unit that's there. We also make, we want to make sure we don't actually take out the general fully. The reason for that is because there's a chance that then he could replace that general with somebody else and I'll be fully replenished. All right, that will be it. And we're going to keep doing the same. Now we're going to start doing the let them live right multiple times. So we can get the extra proof. battle captives taken of 20%. So I have a new mission to construct a new building and also to have 20 units in an army. We're going to, of course, we're going to get that one for no reinforcements a lot. Now, this one gets interesting. We can give expandable and discipline traits for the units of the size or the Napata territory. Again, an early game based skill that you're, that's going to get lost as you get to late game. So get the extra missile damage for missile units and then the extra experience for those units. And then here now, we can actually win this engagement. But before we doing so, we kind of we kind of forget about this as we're playing. We want to keep calling these units as much as we can. All right, so, since we don't have enough wood to actually recruit some more of those units from the Napata territory, we can just basically ask for it from Troy. And now we got it for free. Let's go here. Let's go to Napata. And then we call these reinforcements yet again. 
and then from there come back and then go pop 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 boom now what we're getting to is to an army that's almost fully vanguard deployable which is really nasty additionally oh before doing this i, I keep forgetting we can potentially get the Hephaestic equipment, but I have to be careful here because I'm trading very low on the Hephaestic armor that I have, or the bronze that I have left. Let's take out this army. There, we're not going to take that much uh, casualties. And from there, we've completed yet another territory. We did run out of push on, so we want to make sure that we get the it activated ashes. for the next settlement battle. And with that, multiple offensive battles, we keep getting destroyers, so we can uh, take out or cause... We want to lower... The enemy siege holdout time to one turn so after sieging for only one turn we could potentially affect the ai greatly so we're still going up slowly in horde growth and we'll go for this settlement in just a second our armies are replenishing little by little and in terms of divine will i can definitely do a prayer to um get the warriors of artemis because i will be able to get enough bronze the next turn in order to get the two archer units into my army so we're going to get to this point here. We're going to get about 3,700 bronze, which is bonkers. And from there, keep expanding. Now, I have enough, um, what do you call it, gold to switch this temple. So this is the mechanic that you want to utilize to maximize favor with all of the gods. So the question is, which of these gods do we want to keep switching it to? Now, the key one, the most important one that you want to switch to is Apollo. So what I suggest you do is you keep switching between Apollo and Hephaestus over and over and over again. Because as you go for increasing Hephaestus, you can get to the point where you can cause 30% more melee or AP damage for melee units, which is really powerful. But that's not really the main point where you want to get Hephaestus all the way up. The reason why you want to do it is in order to get the Divine Craftsman recruited in the non-historical based uh, modes because that way you can really max out the stats of your own units aside from that instead of going for hephaestus you can go for zeus in order to lower construction costs of all main buildings and stone construction costs greatly or if you're playing on the other game modes to recruit the minotaur additionally going for Ares is extremely powerful because we can really buff up the stats of two-handed based uh units so anyways we're gonna continue here nothing else to go off of or anything else to do Let's see, get 20 units, construct a building. Yep, we're holding off on all of that. We're still keeping the Ethiopian training range because we can get more recruitment rank for Ethiopian units on this territory later. And then also we can get um, more range for missile units. That will be it here. I don't want to pop any of these at the moment. Let us continue. All right, so now we're going to be doing the same thing yet again. Go to Napata, call in units. Now we have enough units to call in here. Along with the two warriors of Artemis, which we can't recruit at the moment, but we will. And then we see here that some of our units are very low in health, like these guys here. So we're going to do this, upgrade this unit, right? Now we're almost at negative bronze. Let's upgrade this unit as well. But now we're going to engage this settlement. And now we've eliminated this faction. It seems that we're going to lose one unit. Time Militia to units tend to do really bad in the auto resolve. So you're going to see them drop like flies as we do this. Um, at this moment though, I think Koshan might not be so important as it's going to take us some time to cross the waters to the, um, the settlement that is directly below us that has the giants uh, to be recruited. So let's just get this to get more casualty replenishment and horde growth. And then we want to get a, to a total of, oh wow, because we're not playing myth mythos mode. Instead of being giant units recruited here, we actually get more reinforcements. Uh, when you actually call in units from a territory. Damn, that's really powerful. So he did level up again. And now we're getting to the point where we can get an upgraded melee unit for him. I don't want to waste these points initially on these units. We're going to keep them with a very weak unit as we utilize our skill points on other skills that are going to be very valuable for us economically and for our army and as well as abilities. We don't have enough horde growth to um, build anything else at the moment. Uh, but what, what I can do though is unite some of these units. Um, these guys are done, so we can remove this unit here. And then continuing, I have one more militia unit that I can recruit. And then I still have 19 units left. Some of these guys are very low health, which is the really bad thing. Let's do this. And now we can get two warriors of Artemis and afford them, which is crazy. 
So that nets us two really powerful units with minus 10 morale causing, um, uh, what do you call it? Minus 10 uh, morale whenever they shoot a unit. And that's going to be something that we really want to utilize as we keep expanding. Additionally, let's get all these units with the Hephaestic armor. We have enough bronze to just keep popping this over and over and over again. And then as well as we're going to get healed up probably as we cross into the water. We're going to stay standing move a little bit closer towards the water because we want to make sure that once we get in the water we have enough campaign movement range to reach all the way down there in terms of divine will no other buffs that i want to go for here but given the amount of gold that i have at the moment um we can actually do a switch here to another temple but right now i have i don't have so much gold that i can potentially do another switch yet again so it would be only one switch and that is it note that i could do a rotation before proceeding southwards to take this Athena settlement, which would be really valuable for me, or um, this one for Apollo, and that could actually net me a lot of favor. We'll decide what to do. But right now, we want to get in the water and start proceeding for our next epic mission, which is actually, I think, Racing Crete is the next one. We're, we're getting down there to the island. It's only turn four. We've made a ton of progress so far, and we can't recruit any units. Neither do we have enough wood for recruiting units from Kerma, which is where are the most important units that we want to utilize. So overall, we're in a really good state here. We still have prayer to Apollo, still active, and enough gold to afford. Actually, let's get this assignment here. Um, we can get the one for Egyptian assassin because we can afford it at the moment. So if we ever need to use this, we can. And what this will do is defend the health of a hero to have health. You'll definitely be popping this in the early to mid game all the time. All right, I move my army into Force March towards this island. I'm going to actually just play off of the epic missions and ignore the rest of these um, missions or this favor that I can gain by going up north. It's just going to slow down the campaign progress for you if you rotate that way. Our, our next epic mission is to give 150 gold or more to Lysia. So let's go to him. Know that if you're playing at this total war campaign, um, we will make you cannot give this to him. To so in order to complete father. this mission, you will then actually need to, um, what do you call it? You will actually need to destroy his faction in order to complete this epic mission. Now with that, the buff that we got is minus 15% to construction cost of all horde buildings, plus four horde growth, and 100% more administrative efficiency. So now we're going even faster through all of these things, which is something extremely valuable to be doing. So we're gonna get this gold that we show that we uh, that appears here. That's gonna finish another mission that we have to get a royal decree completed. We wanna get more horde growth with nature's bounty, and we also wanna get the Susa territory as fast as we can. We don't have enough. Um, what do you call it? Bronze to get all the way to the Susa territory, nor do we have the resources to afford it, but that's something we want to prioritize later down the line. That will be it here. Let us continue. All right, so I took uh, Memnon's army. I went around the island and I sat, I'm sitting on Arcasia here. And what I want to do at this moment is get enough wood in order to build the hero's tent, which will complete two missions, giving me a good amount of stone wood across both of the missions. So let's go to diplomacy yet again. And Sarpedon is not necessarily too happy. I just give them 150 freaking gold. And if we look here, Troy is in need of bronze for some weird reason because I don't really need it. And then we're going to be like, yo, man, I want to get a lot of wood. How much wood can you give me? Oh, shoot. That might be too much wood for you. Go like this much. Because I want to have enough to actually be able to keep recruiting units. So let's drop this down. There we go. And that's going to give me a ton of wood. And then from there, now I can build this. That's going to get me more horde growth as well. So we're good there. We got a pretty good amount of um, gold as well in case we need to do any prayers. And I'm stepping on this area where I could maybe see if, he could, if the enemy will actually engage me um, this upcoming turn. So... What I want to do is I don't want to call any units. I'll keep these 19 units because if I defeat this settlement, you can see that I can gain plus two reinforcements for each unit each time we call reinforcements. What that will do is I can gain two more of any of these units if I want to. But the real gist of this, what I want to do is get the reinforcements for Kerma so I can get three urgent staff bearers and three of the javelin men and archers phenomenal units to get and they will replace some of the buckload of the militia units that i have at this time let's continue 
All right, so the enemy did not engage me as I stepped on the on the island. So what I can do here is I don't want to waste a ton of gold on more units. Maybe I can just get a bunch of shaft at the moment by using a bunch of food in order to just be able to fill up this entire army. So let's go here. I want to get maybe one more of these units here on this army. Make sure everybody has the Hephaestic armor, which I think was only him that was missing it. And then we're going to actually push to grab this region. It's a bit of a difficult battle. And I think what I can do is potentially wait for them to sally out because with the auto resolve uh, chance that I have at the moment, I could potentially win this um, against the enemy. So let's just actually continue siege, Remember see if he actually engages out of the settlement and then take it from him. All right, we're good there. I don't think I want to pop any of these. We're in a good state overall. If Astas is going to drop, but I don't really need anything at the moment related to it. So let's just keep moving here. All right, so I got the next epic mission here, which is to have five camp followers. Gonna get a lot of resources from doing it. I also completed this mission. Um, and I got the Trojan, what do you call it? Support the Trojans mission so I can support them, which is not bad. And then here, you know, nothing related to this that I want to do. This army has four followers at the moment um let's see which one do i want to get i do want to get the extra campaign movement at sea so i should have probably gotten this with the 10 percent reduction to camp followers which is activated at the moment and now we have all of these resources and even he leveled up yet again and then these skills pain barrier and terrify he does not have in outside of historical mode so i don't necessarily want to use points on things that are not found outside of historical mode Time for him but at the moment we're gonna keep sieging the ai is not actually engaging me outside of the settlement let's just see if he does this battle. next turn if not then he will actually um take attrition in two turns which should actually net me what i need to take the settlement with a weakened uh garrison all right at this turn nothing happened here so we're gonna hold off on doing anything let's continue so we got a mission to build a uh, sacred stone um, leveled uh, building for a god. We already have that completed. That gives us 500, um, what do you call it, wood. And I have a mission to issue the Kana, Kananit Brothers Royal Decree, which is this one all the way down here. And I don't really care about getting this one at the moment. So we can just forget that mission for now. The enemy did take some attrition from, um, what do you call it? from uh basically uh me taking over the settlement or sieging it for three turns so it's time that i actually engage this army and take it out i am not going to be able to pop the camp follower because the ai hero already has less than 50 percent hp let's begin all right so i actually clicked the start battle before i recorded so <laughs> i kind of got in the tricky situation here i put these four units here to climb up and they're hiding and then i got this guy to sh get into this gatehouse now, I did put also this one on this point here to actually push towards this gatehouse. Um, so Memnon can also push up. Uh, but actually, I think I'll just take him this way. And then all of these guys, I don't want them to get shot by the, what do you call it, the towers. And then these ones over here, I put in an area where they were outside of the border of this tower. So I can just move these guys over here to climb up and just take this. Let's go over here with Memnon. faster yeah we're gonna let all these ethiopian people climb up in this area which is gonna be really good because there's no missile units here to capture the gates okay let's round him Consider it done. 
You have captured the gates. Okay, thank you. What to do is you go for this unit. There. Okay, no, 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 I know how this goes. Your warriors are attacking the gates. Moving up. Fear us. Born to fight. We the enemy gates have been destroyed. For Ethiopia. Spears. Honor and victory. Come on, guys. Push on. For duty and honor. Make them pay. Tear them apart. Death will save you. Warriors are rallying. Spill their blood. Destiny for immortality. Moving. Glory. Foes. Shatter the foe. Vanquish them. Distaff warriors. Drop men. Fight with valor. For victory. For Ethiopia. On the march. Ares, your warriors are rallying. Ethiopians, attack! For King Men. Don't break through the spear warriors, you're the most powerful unit that I have. There you go. Enemy hero has sustained right, a wound. Your warriors have been routed. All right, and that's it. They require yet another settlement. Took more casualties for being careless, but overall, we're moving really well. All right, and with that, we're getting some pretty good treasures overall. And we're still in the water, so I don't see the point of getting pushed on, as I don't think... I will get to the settlement in two, the next settlement in two turns in order to be able to take advantage of that. So let's get a horde growth yet again. I continue to learn. All right. After finishing that battle, I want to get as much wood as possible. So I'm asking, or not as much as possible. I want to get to 3,000 to get some of those awesome, uh, blah, 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 some of those awesome urgent staff bearers along with the Ethiopian uh, archers and the javelin men so let's do this trade here wood for uh my bronze uh with troy and then additionally i'm building up the hero's retinue to get this uh up to the next level as well as get plus one recruit rank for ethiopian units and then i'm gonna go to kerma to get this activated so it cost me a steep amount of wood but i also did activate a hecatomb and a prayer to athena to get plus two recruit rank for all units so i'm gonna be getting uh, in the next turn, all of these Ethiopian units at recruit rank 3, which is going to be great. Now, I do want to avoid the enemy from potentially attacking me during the end turn. Uh, if there's any enemy... Actually, do I have any enemies? What the hell do I have at the moment? Yeah, uh, there's two more settlements left, dude. Okay, so yeah, we'll stay here for a moment, in build this up. And then we did level up and have a little bit more skill points. And these ones are found outside of historical mode. Getting active camp followers is valuable... But once you get to the mid to late game, you're no longer you're gonna afford a lot of uh, these camp followers, so you don't really have to go for this. 
so i do want to get this to get plus eight morale of all units in heroes aura which you can increase its size greatly by defeating other heroes like i think agamemnon is one of them and then this this is subjective if you like to go for the rng of potentially stealing a good item from the enemy you can go from protector of people to increase ancillary drop chance but i like to get chain wins against many armies that go after me so i can get 20 percent more movement range of hero after battle note that this is not this does not actually increase if you actually get um a c if you win against a uh region a siege battle you're still only going to get 30 percent movement but against armies you will get that buff we're going to keep an additional skill point so we can get the extremely powerful truce ability which is one of the best abilities in the game and something that i would also select for the skill tree right for memnon so that's it here nothing else to do there's still one more mission which is to issue the canaanite brothers royal decree but i'm not going to be focusing on going that route I'll get the horde growth here and then work my way downwards to get these um royal decrees on the bottom left so then we can get make sure the gods um don't drop as much and also hecatombs don't cost as much food to activate all right so continuing here i got in the water and then i basically replaced all of the militia units and all of the lower tier ethiopian javelin men and uh an egyptian slinger that i had left to get entire and almost an entire army of ethiopian units along with two warriors of artemis and then a nephro infantry that i still have left over that have full health i also got them all with the bronze equipment and additionally i decided to switch up the royal decree that i was going for next i want to get to the root of the upper kingdom um royal decree here because the reason for going for that one is that i can get the egypt based followers which contain plus 100 experience for units in this army which is great plus minus 10 percent to upkeep costs and i can disable enemy towers which is one of the best things you can do um, when doing siege battles in this game so that will be it here let us continue all right now that i set foot on satea i put my army into the ethiopian encampment so i lose less fatigue over time in the battle and i have more morale when defending in case the enemy engages me he will have more than 21 units and full health compared to me so if he has to engage me he will have a numerical and hp advantage so we will see how this goes here let us continue so this general was actually on the left side of this settlement i tried to engage him to see if all of the units would have actually done the battle but he decided to run away so now i'm engaging the settlement the it would take two turns for to cause attrition I'll make sure that I build up as much of these, um, what do you call it, the battering rams as possible. And there might be a chance that the enemy will attack me uh, during this end turn. We'll see how this goes. All right, same thing this turn. We're still sieging, waiting for attrition to kick in in two turns. Let's go. All right, turn 15. The enemy is here, still giving his units around, but attrition is going to hit this next turn. We'll see if he sallies out his army during the end turn. And due to the attrition now, this battle Fight can be won decisively. Honor. And I can now proceed to get push on in order to get more statistical buffs as I push on towards the rest of the territories and get more stone and wood, which would be beneficial given to the little amount of stone that I have at the moment. Now we got the ram horn, which gives 10% to charge of all units. It's actually a, another one that gives another item that gives plus 10% more charge. Or sorry, plus 15 more charge. And another one that gives plus, um, what do you call it? plus 20 percent which are crazy so we got truce now which is a huge aoe castable 200 meters away 60 meter aoe and it causes plus 30 percent melee defense for our own units and minus 50 percent melee attack of the enemy which is phenomenal so aside from that i do want to keep building uh buildings at this time so we can now get this to reduce construction cost by 15 percent which is going to be a really beneficial building to um, get in order to keep building buildings as they cost a lot of resources to build them. Now, I, I am running short on bronze, which is dangerous. So if you look here in terms of bronze, the nearest settlement is all the way down here. I will have a couple of terms to get to it. So that's something that I have to prioritize um, in due time. So that will be it here. I can do a doo doo Artemis getting all the way up as it did. I can keep leveling it up with a hecatomb in order to get it even higher in level and i can also do a prayer to artemis to also then get it um to not a prayer sorry i can get a switch temple uh once i get enough gold 
in order to get it maxed out and get the total of seven wars of artemis in my army i already have two so i can recruit five more so we can do this here um do i want to do it right now though hecatomb takes five turns to activate let's wait on that because i want to get more hecatombs from uh raising that the bronze that i can gain from that other settlement let's continue all right continuing here i was able to raise this settlement i did lose one unit from um the engagement so i could definitely group up some of these and then get more units as well recruited from um either kerma probably from this one because they these units are definitely cheaper just to keep refilling the ranks as i lose units so let's actually do this one here and then coming back to this location let's get another one of these these units can stay as they are let's get this one with that armor so that will be it there nothing else that i want to build because the next building that i want to build is the tier five here um but it costs a lot of gold and wood that i do not have okay so my epic mission that i have to complete next is raise nosos which is right there definitely can do that now i did see this army of nosos rotate back to this settlement to acquire it so i could definitely actually i could re-raise both of these settlements here to gain a lot more experience for the this army so i can just actually do this come back this way finish off this faction excellent yeah and then from there let's keep stacking push on as much as possible so we finally destroyed that faction that was at war with you take back to this guy so i did not level up right nope but we'll uh, raise this army next. Note how low my bronze is. I might have to ask from from Troy. We'll see if we need to. But overall, we're good here. I do have enough population though to build one of these buildings up. And then getting more um, campaign movement range is really valuable um, at this time. So definitely let's get that one at this moment. Let's go here. This one's valuable too, but it costs a lot of wood that I do not have. That will give me plus 5 melee defense for all units and army. Let's go here. Boom. And get that one. Right. And with that out of the way, we'll have in, still have enough population surplus to build this one. Once we have enough resources for it, we will do it. No hecatombs to pop just yet. Let's continue. Okay. It's time to declare war on Nosos here. And with that, this settlement that he just took is really weak. We can take it. Keep leveling up Memnon. Keep getting pushed on so we always have it active. The only way for you to see how much you have left of um Servant of Egypt. they have left of push on Son is when you're sieging or doing an engagement you'll see how much you have left at that moment let's get on ambush stance here in case the enemy decides to move his army to this location and then we can try to or this one as well we can try to get take him out as he does that we can also um level or get a prayer to artemis to get more ambush chance which would be a great thing to do for our army at this moment Divine ones, I beseech you. all right and with that let's continue at that last turn i did level up uh memnon but i didn't select any points and i should have next one i want to get is um healing arts when in camp so i can get seven percent more replenishment while in camp stance i would have actually probably gotten this army fully healed up but let's go this way let's see if he has any army at this location nothing right now we can engage it so this is a, a battle that can cost me a lot of attrition but i think manually it'll be a bit better for me i could spend gold to weaken him further and it is a armored swordsman unit which actually is a bit tougher to deal with um it actually might be better for me to actually weaken him at this time so let's do that and let's begin this battle so yeah he'll be at 50 percent hp which is that and he'll be the toughest unit that i have to deal with and the rest of my missiles can take out the enemy as we uh strike so this settlement is a pretty good one to attack uh, on especially because if you attack from this area right over here you can do it something cheeky like this you put your, your units with snipe closer towards the uh the enemy so they're not uh, seen per se. And in this guy... Okay, we're going to put you right here. If his enemy does anything cheeky, we can just prevent them from flanking. And then Memnon over here. Memnon does not have Manger deployment uh, outside of historical mode. So you just take that into account. Um, all of these guys though... Okay, 
There's no good way to hide around here, right? That's okay. Just stand right here. Four units on this side is good enough. The All right, let's begin. Sighted your hidden units. Faster. Actually, make you move faster as well. Your hero is under attack. We can't shoot at the moment. Look at this cast range. Disgusting. Should be it, right? Yeah. All right, that will be it. Let's get out of here. So I think some of the urgent took a little bit of damage, but I think we're still good. Yep, very good. And keep doing the push on. I continue to learn. And he does have a two-unit army here. I can still pull him away from me. I can't reach the settlement. And thankfully, there's wood here that I actually do need as well. But what I do want the most is to uh, take this settlement. And I will go negative on bronze, but we should be okay. And let's go down. So here, you can get more charge for units. I like to get a f like crazy amount of the Sheridan Warriors in the late game. So I prefer to go for the plus 5% melee attack and then the plus 10% to melee attack of sword units. So the Sheridan Warriors get buffed, which is the best yeah. unit in this roster. I mean, bar none. It, that's just how powerful they are. But we're good here. I did, I think, activate a prayer to Artemis. So I could recruit these units if I want to. Five more of them. Jeez. They do cause bronze, which I don't have at the moment uh, to recruit. So we'll pull this guy towards us. Maybe there's another army at this location as well. We'll see what the enemy does. It is turn 20. So definitely if I wanted to finish this campaign already, you know, uh, or do I like a 20 turn guide, we haven't taken Nosos, but we'll do it in due time. All right, we successfully pulled that army away from Nosos. So it has been taken out. Let's do the let them live so we can get the extra battle captives taken. And we got it. This is going to really help us with replenishment during these engagements now because after we do battles, we can get a lot of units um, health back, um, which is going to be really good for us. Now, we've reached the level where we can get Sheridan Warriors as a bodyguard unit. So it being historical mode, I'm not going to get this. I'm going to keep the Ethiopian Spearmen. But at, when you play historical, don't upgrade the unit until you get the most the bodyguard unit that you want. So you can spend skill points on other things that are really valuable. Aside from that, I'm not going to spend any points here. I'll wait to I level yet again to get that leveled up. Memnon of Ethiopia. And then I do want to get Nosos next. All right. Very good. We'll get three of these uh, for the upcoming battle. Remember your training. Let's go. AI decided to engage <clears throat> and we can definitely take this out. 
uh what we want to do here is at least reduce to half health this fighter champion who has a laconian swordsman i don't worry too much about the spearman they won't be doing too hot even though it does have lead by example but this here does not have any skills due to being a garrison based hero so let's pop this here and then just win the vic the battle manually all right to begin this battle i'll play in the same sort of area we're still playing the same map um outside of a settlement right when we're attacking it as a previous battle that we did i'll put memnon in the far back since he doesn't have shield or armor so i want to protect them from missiles but the ethiopian spearmen are the units that i could just keep uh recruiting over and over and over again and take a lot of brunt of damage while the rest of my units i want to be damage inflicting and keep safe as much as possible and i want to get um this nephew infantry to the very far front line to soak up missile damage all right let's begin here Foe has sighted your hidden units. Your warriors are losing heart. Warriors have been routed. Stop and deadly. Take them down. We shall not falter. Show no fear. Take them down. Warriors are rallying. Your warriors have spotted hidden foes. Victory is close enough to taste. Alright, let's make sure my units don't get shot that bad.
very good overall the ethiopian spearmen didn't, didn't definitely do too hot on the front line but <clears throat> overall their units that can be just keep getting replaced everybody else that is important actually did pretty well and it didn't lose that many unit models and with that we do have the battle captives so now we can start doing take them on to get more replenishment after battles from getting more battle captives and let's do this and now it's really weak the settlement so we can just take it and now Nosos is finally ours and we can keep doing push on and with that we got Poseidon at 450 we raised Nosos so now we got 100% more administrative efficiency and then this gets interesting so you can either make um what do you call it uh what the hell's his name memnon stronger in combat or get plus five gold per turn personally i want to make him even stronger because when you use him in the campaign he has great abilities to boost up his own units and he also has good uh skills but not enough to make him into a 1v1 killing machine so giving him this will help shore him up passively in combat so then he becomes stronger um and other manners here so here we can take him this way to now get the bronze that we need and we're just gonna run through all of these settlements around here to finish off nosos and everybody else and at the same time we want to keep leveling all of these things up and additionally get um the heroes pavilion which we will be able to once we raise the lapa based settlement but the faction of nosos is going to be eliminated and that will be great for us so overall we have done some really good progress in these first 22 turns we have completed the next epic mission or that what did i say next we've completed the epic mission to take or raise the settlement of crete we're gonna go and raise the rest of the settlements across the island of nosos and then we'll reach etis over here and the epic mission after that one will be to raise sparta and once we've done that then we gotta go all the way out here to erase achilles and by then you'll be pretty much done actually i think you gotta eliminate the faction of achilles is uh the final epic mission so you definitely just want to rush through all of this before achilles confederates someone and blows up in size so you can complete the epic missions in a pretty fast state and if you want to you can then transition to do the total war victory so overall this has been a very fun early game guide 22 turns you can make it 20 if you want that nice little even number you know multiple of 10 that people love early 20 turn guide um if you don't necessarily cause attrition across some of these major settlements that you can potentially try to do like i did in i think at least one of the major regions so overall i really want to thank you for watching now if you have any comments on how you would do this differently you know any other tips and tricks that you want me to create any, anything else that you want to share your feedback on, I'd really appreciate it. Any likes, comments, subscribe, sub subscriptions would be greatly appreciated. I really want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.